Chapter 9 As manager of the club Valentine, Giancarlo bought advertising at a discount to run a feature on the entertainment page in the Daily Herald, Commerce Crossings newspaper. His business acumen as the son of business-minded Papa Rosario told him that the old boy now would will feel proud of him. This new job was another opportunity for him to behave like a dutiful, able, responsible, capable fellow looking out for the well-being of his wife and their two children. He kept reminding himself of it as he continually earned a sizable profit for Delmonico Associates. As a perk, Nick involved him in his campaign for election to political office. It's a lot of extra work for me, really, but hey, Giancarlo told himself, it's well worth the effort because I'm grateful to Nick for his magnanimity. Absolutely died in the wool super grateful. Through Giancarlo's auspices, during the past month a rock band that once had scored a million selling hit tune did a cameo performance at the Club Valentine. Patrons paid $50 a ticket. The Club Valentine seated 800 people. The band performed for three nights. Delmonico Associates made a killing financially. Moria welcomed Giancarlo's bonus included in his paycheck. Now that he once again converted to the concept of money making, adopted the mercantile world as his own, Moria once again felt completely satisfied being his honey bunny. Whenever anyone saw Giancarlo these days he was chomping a fresh stick of spearmint chewing gum while displaying a smiling face and his white and even teeth. Not once but twice his smiling face appeared in his photograph on the entertainment page in the Daily Herald. The accompanying news articles had stated such things as, Giancarlo Giaconetti, manager of the Club Valentine, said, What a great guy my boss. When people inquire how I feel about working for Delmonico Associates I tell them, Delmonico Associates is the greatest. Nick gobbled up this high-minded adulation. Oddly enough it even helped him get elected. The Club Valentine's soaring beverage sales delighted Nick, too. He bragged to everyone about the bang-up job Giancarlo Giaconetti does for us. Giancarlo's high opinion of himself soared to higher and higher heights of self-approval. The way he operated the Club Valentine drew scads of patrons, spenders that got their money's worth and then went away happy to have experienced a roaring good time. No jitterbugs, no minors, no problems were Giancarlo's guidelines for steering a course of action as a conscientious businessman. The fabulous way things were going for him financially caused Giancarlo to begin thinking that the day was near when he and his Moria could set up shop for themselves. By the way, Nick asked of him one afternoon, how's that lil woman of yours doing? She really understands you. She knows you're in for a whole lot more overtime pay. Giancarlo agreed, you bet your boots Nick. I'm not afraid to put in long hours working for you. My Moria doesn't mind being at home without me. Nick said he got the biggest kick out of him, adding, You're a go-getter buddy. A hard worker. A truly swell fellow. All of what Nick had said about him pleased Giancarlo. It caused him to feel tremendously valuable not only to Nick but also to himself and to his Moria and to their daughters.